I would like to welcome you, uh, members of the International Consultation of Jewish Parliamentarians. It's really very important, this organization. And I will say why I think so. The main problem of the Jewish nation is the unity, is the conflict, the argumentation between us. And this form of Jewish parliamentarians from all over the world is the key to how to speak one and another. It is for us a model how we can achieve unity in the Jewish nation. And unity is solidarity and understanding. And that's why, although my schedule is very busy, I'm coming from a meeting uh, at the Prime Minister's office. My next meeting is also important, but that's this form is very important for me. And I thank uh, all my friends at the uh, Israeli parliament who are here, and especially you, the organizer, who is a close friend of mine and was also a client in my firm. I, again, I disclose the conflict of interest issue. Uh, Shai Hermesh, uh, for organizing this organization, if I may say so, Herzl dreamt about it, how Jews from all over the world will unite under one umbrella. And your organization is a unique and a very important example for this. Now after my very long speech, which is one of my longest speech in my career, I would be happy to hear questions. I do not promise that I know the answer, but I'll be happy to hear the questions. Just present yourself so that I can address you uh, personally. Please. I'm used to cross-examination too, don't, don't be frightened. <laughs> I think we have a unique opportunity to put questions to the Minister of Justice who does not come with a set speech, but invites uh, your comments, and, and knowing the ministers I do, will welcome uh, you know, questions that may even have a, a critical dimension uh, to them. So, uh, Erwin, I warn you, if I will not receive questions, I will speak, and that's very boring. <laughs> Please. Gary? Introduce yourself, so I'll know to I'm, I'm Gary Ackerman from, uh, from New York. From? New York. Big city. Um, I lived in New York a few times in my life. To our great benefit. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let me ask you the following question, Mr. Minister. There seems to be some controversy about the term 67 lines with whatever adjectives one places after or before it. If everybody spoke the same language and said we could get back to the peace talks or get to the peace talks using Israel's fence, which some think was built because that might be a defensible border because they could put the fence anywhere they wanted to put the fence with swaps or in order to save face, put two two suggestions on the table at the same time to say that we get back to the table to talk about lines that would be somewhere utilizing the Israeli defense fence and the 67 lines with swaps. Would that meet Israel's security interests and the Palestinian interests in so much as they've accepted the term 67 lines with swaps? If we put both on the table, would that not make sense and serve the interest of justice for both peoples? Okay. Thank you for the question, because it will 
enable me to explain what is very important. We did not initiate any war against the Arabs or the Palestinians. After the United Nations Declaration of Two States in 1947, we were faced with the first, first war against us to throw us into the Mediterranean, that there would be no Jewish state. We accepted the United Nations resolution, although we were not very happy with the borders at that time, but we accepted it. The war against the Jewish state was declared by the Palestinians and all the seven Arab nations surrounding us. The same thing is true about all the other wars. They decided and declare until today they did want to throw us into the Mediterranean Sea and do not want to acknowledge that we return back to our homeland after almost 2,000 years that they were actually thrown away from our home country. Two, there was never before a Palestinian state in the history of the entire world. Three, we have a evidence, the best evidence, and the, I would say, the most acceptable evidence by most people, most people in the world, the Bible. Eretz Israel is designed to be a Jewish state. And if I will start with a very, very famous saying of Rashi, one of the most important Jewish scholars, when he starts, the Bible starts, Bereshit bara Elokim, God created first the earth and heaven. And it says there, why doesn't the Bible start with the fact that the Jewish nation was established when we left Egypt? It says because the Bible wants to tell the whole world that the earth was created in order to settle the Jewish nation in its homeland. And therefore, there is no question of 1948, 1947, 1967 borders of the Yom Kippur War borders. First of all, it has to be understood and accepted that we are back in our, our homeland and that we are not here to be thrown away to the Mediterranean. Once our neighbors who started all wars to kill us will understand it and accept it, will sit down to the negotiation table and negotiate how the state of Israel can be a free and a democratic country with secured borders with a understanding that there will be no more wars in this region. And therefore, it's not a question of 47 borders, 48 borders, 67 borders, or any other 
let's sit down and negotiate with understanding of the basic principle, a Jewish state and a secured security for its residents and no more, no more wars. I hope I answered your question. It was a little bit too long, but well, you can cross-examine me. Well, I, I don't choose to cross-examine the Minister of, of Justice, but um, you, you've certainly answered something. Um, but I, I, I may not know a lot about the Bible, uh, but I know that God does not have any vote at the United Nations, and the Palestinians have about 130. I cannot, I'm not a spokesman for God, uh, at, at least, uh, and not his uh, Minister of Justice. I have what I see written. I give, this is the evidence. And here you're, I you're see... You're citing the Bible, is that evidence? But Bible is an evidence, sure. Bible is accepted by billions of people in the world, and it's the oldest document we have. Show me one more document which precedes the Bible. No, I didn't is, say it's the point. The point, but you, the, the point is, you have a practical problem that begs of a solution within an expiring period of time. We do not have eternity to figure out this problem. There are many clocks that are ticking, and many clocks have wires connected to TMT, TNT, and dynamite, and all kinds of explosives. Uh, I don't know which expires first. You're absolutely right. But if if you in order to negotiate, at least what I, I learned when I was a student, you need two parties. You cannot negotiate with yourself. Negotiation, by definition, is that you have two parties to sit down. Let's face it. They are not ready to sit down with us and negotiate because they know that they have to accept the basic principle that the Jewish state exists. Well, the fact that the Jewish state exists is a fact. But they don't but the accept it. That the Palestinian state will exist is a matter of speculation to some, but some believe September is coming, and that may change the dynamic. And that if the reality is you're waiting for the Palestinians to accept your version of the Bible in order to prove that they're ready to negotiate, I think we have a bigger problem than I that's thought. Not the, that's not what I said. That's not what I said, and made it made very clear. I said very clear. The Bible is evidence. I put it as a document. Exhibit A. That, but I, I, I stress again, I need a party to negotiate with who understands and accepts that there is a Jewish state here. And they afterwards we negotiate the borders. I wanted to make it very clear, and I want you to understand it, that we don't have a problem with the Palestinians, what the borders will be. We have a problem that did not accept that we are here as a Jewish state. The border issue is the second issue. And let me again state, could you tell me when and where was the Palestinian state? And I can tell you where there was a Jewish state and what dates and when, when we stopped to be a Jewish state because in the year 70 of the... Uh, uh, we were exiled from here. When we stopped to be a Jewish state because our enemies, who were at that time not the Palestinians, decided to stop the Jewish state. Can I get other questions? Okay. Yeah.
I thought okay. that ladies first, so that's be, all I know. The, the, At least at home I have five daughters and one son, so I'm in the minority. The, the next two questioners, as I saw them, would be Michael Danby from Australia, Senator Sudarsky from Colombia, and then we'll continue from there. Michael. Uh, thank you. Minister, I, I read in the newspapers today that um, uh, near the, the fence near Berlin um, has been taken down by order of the Supreme Court and is being shifted to uh, another place closer to, I think it's to Modin. I'm not sure whether that's, I've got the pronunciations of those two places correct, but how many times has the Israeli Supreme Court uh, made judgments about where uh, the fence is and how many times has it been shifted? In my opinion, it's um, a very good thing that in Israel the rule of law is predominant and that uh, even on such matters as security, you can take such matters to uh, uh, your Supreme Court of Justice. I want to make it very, very clear. We have an outstanding Supreme Court in Israel. I am the chairman of the committee of appointing judges. We just appointed last Friday 22 judges to lower courts. We have a 15-member Supreme Court. Uh, and uh, it is a very, very, I would say, it creates justice, and that's what is important. It is the, the most important institution to make clear what the law is if there is a conflict between parties. The issues which you refer to were the decision was based on facts which were presented to the courts, either whether the land is registered on some a Palestinian resident or that the land divides a certain village. Uh, I think it's under the circumstances the decisions are correct and we should observe them. Thank you. Uh, Minister, with the greatest respect that your, all your qualifications and position 